Yeah, so it's made of fabric. It, yes, it's, um, it, it's some old material. I, it, it, I found it in the mill. Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, out on another exploration. And I'm very excited today because I've come to Burton Mill. I've been on a walk here oh, a few months ago, walked around the wonderful mill pond, but now I've got this amazing opportunity to come inside and have a look at a real working mill. And joining me is Barry Flanagan. Hello, Barry. Hey, hello. Richard. Now, you own this mill. Yeah, very fortunate to mm. own this mill. We've, we've been here three years now. It yeah. is a fascinating yeah. mill. Off camera, we've had a look round. Just tell me a little bit about the history of the mill, because this goes right back to the iron industry, doesn't it? It does. I mean, the, the site was part of um, the wheeled and iron industry, and so there was a forge here um, for a, probably a thousand years or something. With big hammerheads. Yeah, big hammers and all sorts and all of stuff. That, yeah. Bits bits of evidence of that. But this building dates from about 1790 or 1780. Built as a... As Built a as a flour water mill. mill, yeah, probably yeah. a flour mill. Could have been a, could have been a feed mill, um, but we're not really sure right. exactly what its use was. Um, but obviously developed through the 1800s as a as a working flour mill with four sets of stones. So and two water wheels. That's and two uh, water yeah, wheels. That's yeah, that's on well. on either side, east yeah. and west. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so, and I, you know, presumably it was quite a successful business in those days. And then. Um, in about uh, well 1890 something um, the uh, eastern wheel was replaced by a turbine which is in the garden yes. um, now uh, to drive to generate electricity for Burton Park House so this was was this was Burton Park House's mill we believe so yes yeah. and yeah. so the turbine this new fangled technology absolutely brand new yeah was DC, was generating yeah. electricity that's yeah. just amazing so isn't it, it ran uh, it would have run you know a dozen or so bulbs in lighting <laughs> just lighting i mean it was right. very and it was very unreliable they say oh um but yeah so that that ran until electricity came mains electricity came which is in the 20s but also um not only flour but later on it was being used as a sawmill is that right that's right. I mean, I think it's gone through it's gone through a lot of phases. After somewhere in the in the 1930s, it was reconfigured as a flour mill um, for a, a variety of grains, as we understand. So it, it was unusual in that it mixed grains for, right. for blending. On, on so that that was a new thing that was coming. I, I in. think it was a new thing, a better quality breads or yes. whatever it was. Um, and then, you know, subsequent to that. It was. It would have been hard going because the you know, commercial reality is that roller mills were so much cheaper to operate and they yes. produced such higher quality product reliably. And it was around the 30s, in the 1930s, that windmills and water yeah, mills were all sort of right. going out of fashion, yeah. becoming derelict because the industry had changed, and the milling was being done nearer the port. That's right. It was because the the bulk of the bread making flour came from Canadian wheat, which was very strong, very good for bread. Oh, right. It made sense to actually mill it where it landed, yes. rather than bring it out to small enterprises like this. But, uh, you know, apparently one, one of the histories did say that they would, uh, they would use Canadian wheat here as well oh, as, right. the, as the local wheat. But of course, um, after that, it would just became, it was, it was, I think it was a failed venture. And so, yes. the, so there was a time when it was operating as a sawmill as well. And then later on in the in the 20th century, as we've seen with so many mills in the area, it became a bit derelict. Oh, totally derelict. But there's a lady that really sort of invigorated yeah, a return yeah. to milling yeah, here. Yeah. Well, through some uh, long and complicated story, the mill came into the ownership of the West Sussex County Council, and they were looking for someone to, to make use of it. It was a sort of visitor centre for the nature reserve, uh, but the rest of the building was falling into disrepair. And uh, Mrs. Mills, who, who um, had the idea, I think, to uh, restart milling. Yes. Um, but by then, because it had been a sawmill, all the stones had gone. Oh, the really? building was too weak. Uh, the structure of the building was too weak to retain, keep the stones. Um, so she, with the help of uh, SIAS, Sussex, Sussex Industrial Archaeological Society, um, and volunteer help, she installed this set of stones um, 
in around about 1979. Good heavens. And so the, the once again, because the turbine was still working, the 1929 turbine luckily was still working. So she had power, she had the stones, and uh, her son then ran it as a mill for seven or eight years, I think. It's an incredible story, and it, you know, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's just coincidence. She's called Mrs. Mills. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. what a brilliant! Yeah. And, uh, and, but she, and she's still here, and she came to our open day, and and she's she's fabulously pleased that it's working. Yes, again. and in a way, her coming in in the eighties must have really saved the mill as a mill. It would, yes. I mean, without if the presumably if the council hadn't found. Uh, uh, someone to take on the lease it would have you know it would have fallen into complete disrepair yes um, or it would have been converted into a house and so it would have been lost forever but Absolutely. luckily she put the machinery back in and so in the subsequent conversion so less than half of the floor area is converted into a house so most of it is still mill um, luckily you know it survived as a as a mill but it obviously subsequent to about 1987 it, it ceased to be used as a mill and then the turbine stopped working seized up and so it was it was abandoned as a mill and uh, yeah fortunately so so you're here now barry yeah and you're very keen and you've been working on this as a as a pet project yeah for, uh, for three years for three and years yeah, yeah so we've got the got the turbine working which was the big challenge um and, a, and built a new shed for it so that was that was the main 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 work because the it, 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 turbines are great they'll last for hundreds of years, but you have to keep using them. Right. If you just leave them, they'll rust up um, and then they won't won't turn again. Yes. So so you do you still mill here and you're yeah. you're going to show us some. Yeah, milling. we're going to show you. We've got uh, so we've got the turbine working, um, and that now drives uh, drives an alternator, uh, which dates from the 1990s. Uh, so we still we can generate all our own power. Wow. We generate uh, we generate our heat in the winter when there's plenty of water. So we basically we're we're quite green. We yes. use it, we use a tiny bit of oil when it's really cold. Yes. Uh, or there's not enough water in the pond. Um, but uh, basically we're we're self sufficient. And then this year um, we've we've got the millstones working and um, we're producing flour. And you have the occasional open day yeah, for two. other enthusiasts who want to come yeah. to mills. Yeah, we open in for National Mills Weekend. Oh, do you? Oh, right, yeah, yes. In May. Yes. And we also open for a, uh, the Petworth Heritage Weekend in September. Oh, right. So, so there we are. Make a note of that. And all the heritage sites are open to the public, including Petworth House. Yes. Uh, they're all free. Um, and uh, yeah, lots of things are lots of things are happening this September in Petworth. So very good. Well, I can't wait really uh, to go and have a look at the operation of the mill. So, uh, yeah. shall we go and uh, have a look at that? We'll head downstairs. See yes. the turbine first. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So, Barry, we've come down to the west side of the mill That's right. uh, because we want to have a look at where the original uh, wheel was, the water wheel. Okay. So, if we if we look just behind us, we can see the mark on the wall, which oh, yes. defines the position of the old water wheel. Um, and if we look up a bit, you can see that the, the water would have come tumbling down near the top of, of the concrete there. Yeah. And it hit the water wheel at quite a speed, turned the water wheel and, and drove the machinery. Right. But the, the, of course, the water wheel became um, sort of derelict. And, yeah. And yeah. They, no don't, they don't last forever and uh, it rotted out. And I think by the, by the 30s, when, when it was going to be re restarted as a commercial mill, um, technology has moved on and we yes. have a, we have a wonderful turbine now. shall we have a look we have a look yes, yes. after you so this is 1929 1930 this is a, this is a 1929 jilks um turbine it's about 27 horsepower so it could easily drive four sets of stones and later as we mentioned earlier it, it drives them um, sawmill as well so Gosh. very very powerful very powerful machine and all compact all oh, inside this yeah, this yeah. Uh, this basically the cylinder isn't it that's it it's in the it's in the, the the actual mechanism is right in the middle it's controlled by veins so you can set the amount of power you get out of it um, and they are when they're when they're left working they're wonderfully reliable um, they go on forever yes now. wow so beyond this you've got the main what would you call it the drive shaft well the lay shaft line shaft yeah, whatever you want to call lots it lots of terms for everything but yes the, a long shaft goes all the way through the mill 
and it might have connected partly to the west uh, wheel, uh, the, sorry, the east wheel, yes, yes. Or, you know, a long time ago, but we don't really know the configuration. But all the machinery then is connected off that shaft. Right, and you're going to turn that we're gonna, on. We're going to start the turbine, yes, um, and we'll see some electricity being generated initially. Wow, after okay. you, sir. So I think it's fair to just add really as we go into the mill here that it's interesting that when you look at a building like this you think oh it's been like this all the time all through its history but like like everything it, there's change, there's innovation. Change. They're, they're, they're living buildings yes. you know you can say well it's not very original but actually at no time of its history was it no, original that's right. because the, the commercial realities you're improving, change, change the use of mills. Progressive, so, yeah. you know, so, so how do we turn something like your uh, turbine on? Well, first of all, we have to take the wedge out. All oh, right. Um, um, so this this controls the vane inside the turbine. As you can see, it's starting to turn the lay shaft. Over there, the green thing is the alternator. Oh, so I see. So we're, yes. we're, we're gradually increasing the speed. It will get a bit noisy, and then in any so now I turn it on, it gets up to its normal running speed, and now it's producing power. Oh yes, and you so can see that by this light bulb. Power. Good heavens, that's amazing. Yeah, and so what we can do now is we can switch over to running the mill from this power. So this oh, now wow. heats and powers the mill. So there we go, and that's just simply the water cascading all over through, from the all the through the water, yeah. Everything's everything's water powered. Right. Well, I think we'll move away because it's it's quite loud. It's quite loud. So what we'll do we'll turn this off, and then we'll connect up the belt, and then have a look at doing some milling. Fantastic! Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> so putting on the belt, Barry. Yes, it's a fun process. This is. Yes. Yeah. So you've got a massive, great big belt. Yeah, here on the long floor. Belt. Yeah. So it's uh, currently just not connected because it's being used for generating electricity only. So that's going on a drum over there. Yeah, so now I'll uncoil this, this, this old fabric belt. Right. So it's, yeah, so it's made of fabric. It's, yes, it's, um, it, it's some old material. I, I, it, I found it in the mill. <laughs> and, I, and it's joined together out of a number of pieces. Right. So it's not 100% not reliable. So this so what, belt is what drives the stones? That's right, so yeah. you're transferring the power from the turbine up to the stones and getting the speed about right. It's about 130 RPM for these speeds, these stones. So it's yes. quite fast for a big lump of stone. Wow. But, now, um, I'll just, just point out that your partner, yeah. uh, Chris, hello Chris, hello. nice to hello. meet you. Nice you're meet doing you. the hard bit, you're generating <laughs> the power at this <laughs> moment, aren't you? I'm turning the wheel. Turning the wheel. <laughs> So not as fast as the water, but uh, it's enabling Barry to be able to get yes. the belt on. Yes, that's right, because he has to actually manually. So this is all belt and braces, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So what you're turning this great big so wheel I'm here. Release this, take this out, and right. then slightly. I've got. Okay, I have yeah. to. Oh, just yes. hold it or else the water would start to turn it. Oh, I see, yes, because there's water because pressure there's on there. Like water coming through a little bit. Yeah. So, Barry, so, okay. are you ready? I'm ready. So, this is where we have to try and get the belt on. So, if, if Chris now turns it a bit. Yeah. It's quite manually uh, intensive, this. Hang on, isn't no, no, you've gone. <laughs> You'll start again, sorry. Here we go. So, now I pull on this. Well done. Right, if you just yeah, just run it for a second, Chris, and then we'll so the belt will center itself because the pulleys are not quite uh, flat. That's enough. So now we can turn it off. Yeah, no, don't touch it. Okay, so now we can we can start the milling. So I have to dress for that. Ah, uh, yes. Brilliant. Well, I'm impressed. Very impressed. Great. So let's get a look at the milling. Okay, so we're going to we're going to run it up slowly, um, and hopefully the belt won't fall off. So Chris, if you just get get it going a bit. Some flour 
are coming out. So this is running off. I'll run off this little bit because this will have a lot of brown in it. And, and Chris has a very important job, don't you, Chris, at this end, because you're monitoring. Yes. But I mean, it's yes. you, you, uh, and there's a reason that that's important. Yes, um, it's important to just watch to make sure that the grain is flowing through properly. Yes. Because if if the grain runs out, if we're not watching it and it runs out, then that can burn the stones. The stones would then grind against each other, and that would be very bad. Because stones, it could cause a spark. Yes. It could cause and as we know, so many mills have exploded yes. because of the, the flower particles from yes. a, uh, a, a tiny the spark. spark. Yeah. So the flower yeah. in the air is, inf is flammable. It's inflammable, yeah. yeah. So that's, and so... Yeah, and if it, the grain goes through too quickly, if you just sort of dumped it all through, it, would, um, it wouldn't grind. It wouldn't make the flower into proper flower. Yes. So, it would, it would so it's quality it's control as well as, yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, yes. when I just said monitoring, it sounded yeah, no. not so important, but it's a very vital <laughs> yeah. role. Yeah. And, um, and we've we got have to feed, obviously, feed the grain through as well. Yes, of course. So it doesn't run out. Keep topping it up. Yes. And, yeah. and presumably in the older days, when you've got up here, just above your head, where the, the shoots are, yes, where the, the hoppers the hoppers are in the in the roof, loft, yes, and the, these shoots would have come through the floor above us and delivered the grain, the grain. into the so that you can the hopper. Yeah, so yeah. You'd be, you'd, you know you'd be busy. <laughs> you'd well, be yes. busy. Yeah. Now, Barry, you've come up with a bag. Yeah, yeah. This is this is the result of what we've just been doing. Well, I say it. we. I haven't done any of it. <laughs> well, the machine has done the it. The machine, we, we yeah. Done it. Water, water has done it. Let's have a look. So this is just in a few minutes. Uh, we've got a nice, nice bag of. Yeah, probably about five kilos of flour. Gosh. So obviously later on we'll we'll mill the rest of this wheat uh, and, and bag it up, and bag it up, and flog it on. Flog it. Well, we we got some. We sell it through the local shops, and yes. uh, you know they've been very successful. I mean, particularly Fittleworth, they they've done. Uh, they, they sell lots of our flour. So where do you get so, the grain from? Is that local as well? Yeah, the, the grain is all grown in West Sussex, and it's yes. supplied by Bartholomews. But because of you know, we have to be very careful about where we buy the grain yes. because it's got to be traceable. So everything is recorded um, and it has to be cleaned. Yes. It has to be recleaned. It can't be just straight from a combine harvester. So, uh, right. yeah, we have to. We have but to it is it. sort of, you know, local to Sussex. It's, it's local, local and grain. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. It's so good to see that the heritage of the area kept and is alive you know it's, it's not just alive, walking around yeah. a museum it's alive and the and the people you know are, are using our flour we we yeah. bake with it and uh, and we've met lots of people at the open days who who say it produces wonderful bread and yes you know, so, well so that's it's, a uh, reward in itself it is, isn't it it's, it is very rewarding yeah well i have to say thank you so much no, for well. taking me round both to barry and to chris <laughs> thank you Thanks. very much it's been absolutely brilliant i loved it there's so much more to see so Clearly, uh, do you have a website? We do. Where you can, yes, where yeah, you post it, your open yeah, days it, and that sort yeah, of thing. Yes, burtonmill.org. There's lots of uh, lots of pictures if you're if you're interested in the mechanics. There's lots of yeah. pictures of the inside of the turbine, um, and and getting it all working. So uh, there's that, and there's a little bit of history on there as well. Well, I put the links in the description, Thank of you. course. So do check them out. Come along to the open days, and uh, yeah, see how it's done for yourself. Thank you guys, it's really, really okay, good. Yeah. Thanks for coming. So don't forget to follow, like and subscribe and I'll see you on another investigation. Leave a comment, tell me uh, what you think. Till the next time, from Burton Mill in Sussex, bye bye.